Good. Um, our next speaker has a subject which is very appropriate. As we all know, um, the national societies are quite involved or try to get involved with the conservation of species. And um, it's good to have a speaker of one of those national societies talking about both the Nepenthe species of Java and the, uh, the current status as of the Indonesian Coniferous Plant Society as a conservation agent. Um, he is one of the founders of the Indonesian cons um, National uh, Coniferous Plant Society. Uh, please welcome Adri Adrian Wartano. I think I, I have to get use of this thing, this new, new stuff. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before I would like to introduce myself, I'm simply called uh, Adrian. And uh, this is with, uh, my first presentation in the international community of carnivorous plant because I used to heating in the forest in the middle of nowhere. So. And uh, talking about my brief story um, with Nepenthes, uh, first time I met uh, Nepenthes in 97, after five years of searching the real Nepenthes. Before I meet the real Nepenthes, there was uh, a lot of plants which are similar, have a similar shape that uh, I was told that was Nepenthes. And once I was uh, from a collector of many a similar plan to Nepenthes. This is uh, the distribution of uh, Nepenthes in the world. Uh, it's, uh, I think after my presentation here, uh, the population of East Java is so, uh, yeah, so more uh, expanded than this picture. So be, because we find uh, another new population in the eastern part. So this is uh, Indonesia, and Java is the, in the middle between, and uh, you can see uh, it's near between the Sumatra. And uh, interesting things is uh, in the western part of Java, it's more uh, the weather is more wet than to this. Uh, eastern part. So uh, the western part is more Sumatran plant influence. Okay. Why Java? Yeah, I think a uh, simple answer that I'm uh, indigenous people of Java. Uh, but no, no, no. Uh, why Java? Because uh, some people mostly uh, try to find uh, another interesting Nepenthes in Sumatra or Borneo because they already know from Dancer that uh, Java only has uh, two species. But later on, I, I will show the another species of Java there. This is I already explained that in the uh, Western part of Java is a more rich diversity in eastern parts. So, so this is the brief story of uh, Nepenthes of Java. That uh, Nepenthes Chimnamphora first first uh, described Nepenthes from Java. It was uh, described by Rainwat, if uh, my memory is right. That, uh, uh, but uh, it's not. Um, Published, so it take over by Nice. Then, uh, in the late of 19th century, we saw that uh, until the beginning of 20th century, there was a lot of uh, 100 Nepenthes specimen from around Java has been collected for the Herbarium Bogoriense. But the period 1945 at present, uh, just few specimens. So the study of Nepenthes of Java, I think uh, only in a uh, dancer, when dancer uh, wrote about this uh, monograph. So this is uh, the classic illustration of uh, Nepenthes Gymnophora by uh, Courthouse. 
This is, uh, he is uh, one of the uh, famous uh, Dutch botanists in back in Indonesia. This is uh, some slight uh, point of the characteristic of Nepenthes gymnampora. Stem, uh, cylindrical stem, and it has a sepetal in the upper part. And the, and, the, and the main thing that you can see that uh, the inflorescence is really uh, two flower. Uh, at first, I would like to uh, in, inform you about this. Uh, since the Nepenthes gymnampora are widespread in uh, Java, Highland Java from west to east, then uh, we find a lot of variety through, uh, through the distribution. And uh, the distribution of the West Java form is uh, from the western part of Central Java to the uh, half of the part of Central Java. And it's uh, rather similar to the Sumatran population, some of the characteristics. Uh, this is the picture of the uh, uh, Sumatran population of uh, Chimnamphora. You can see that um, the picture is more like a rounded. It's more, I think it's more oval shape. So this is the map of the distribution. Well, actually I would like to uh, switch some uh, of the uh, mountain there, but, uh, the, but uh, here it's scan box, so I have to open one by one, uh, one, by one the, the file of it. We start from the western part of the Java of uh, the Nepenthes Gymnophora. So we start from uh, Mount Salak. Uh, Mount Salak is also an uh, active volcano. Uh, here uh, we are going to the uh, uh, location of Nepenthes Gymnophora. We uh, pass through this uh, waterfall. And this Nepenthes, mm, I got no idea but it's interesting anyway. <laughs> ah, here, the typical of uh, West Java population. Uh, it's uh, usually make a cluster of rosette, and um, it's uh, produce more uh, vegetative part in the basal. Sometimes you have to open some of these uh, leaves because it's sometimes it's covered with uh, Leave us this uh, this rosette form. This is the another rosette. The under variety. Still in the single mountain. Uh, this is uh, perhaps the oldest, uh, perhaps the largest uh, stem I, I have I have ever seen. It's it's more than twenty years I think. Okay. Then we are going to this mountain. It's uh, located in the, um, also still in the West Java. This is the mountain where uh, the first specimen of uh, Nepenthes Chinambora has been collected. This is artistic illustration from Jung Hun. He's a well-known botanist. This is a Mon Patuha. This is a, the sulfuric lake. 
And uh, when we want to see uh, the sum of population, we have to climb up to the mountain and to the another side and in the uh, hill of the side. So this is the original specimen uh, which has collected by uh, Jung Hun. And that we see in the uh, living specimen yet, rather than dried up specimen. So this is the typical of uh, Chimnamphora in West Java. Yeah, and the Rosette form. <coughs> That's usually uh, growing with uh, Clasonia or Tigraneptoris. Even in the open space, uh, West Java usually like uh, to hidden, not to expose to uh, direct sunlight. So this is the under variety of upper. Yes. Then we go into the another mountain still in the West Java. The population are also typical West Java, but in different uh, habitat. This is more volcanic mountain. Last time it, uh, I think it's er erupted in uh, 1980. And this is the path if uh, going to the Nepenthes habitat. Young plant. Oops. You can see uh, the red stem is a typical uh, West Java population, also. <coughs> Even that uh, some of the population later on that I described in Central Java is uh, rather bit uh, slightly different. This is the lower picture. And this is a growing habit for the typical of uh, West Java. And they just, uh, at first, uh, scrambling around, then uh, going up to make uh, some of the upper picture. Then it's flowered. It's not uh, like a, like a f uh, vertical growth. They just scrambling around first. And the upper picture. Then we go to the uh, another West Java population. This is uh, Mount Slamet in Central Java. But it's even in uh, in map you see it's uh, including in Central Java, but uh, the typical of Nepenthes here is still uh, belong to West Java form. This is the typical habitat of the lower mountain forest. So, if you ha uh, have a good sighting here, I think you can find uh, the rosette of Chimnamphora. Uh, sometimes you, if uh, you did not notice that, uh, you just uh, pass away and otherwise, the, and then the, the plant is uh, destroyed because it's hiding in the uh, bushes. This is the typical. It's uh, making uh, any uh, rosette, a lot of. Rosette, that typical uh, West Java population. This is the under climbing stage. Here is the um, Central Java population. It's a intermediate form between the Western population and the Eastern. So um, it has uh, also a limited distribution around here. So this is the mountain. 
is uh, the mossy forest uh, below one uh, fifteen hundred meter of sea level. This is the uh, open area for this uh, appendix. Let's see. This is the upper picture of this uh, central Java population. Inflorescence and the uh, rosette, but they uh, start to uh, produce less uh, cluster of rosette uh, compared to the West Java population. This is another young plant. So this is uh, information of some of the characteristic of uh, Central Java form. So here the, the was the uh, that uh, last distribution of this uh, Central Java form is uh, active mountain. Uh, active mountain. Its last uh, eruption is uh, when. I think it's uh, three years ago, 2006. Oops. This is the habitat for this um, Central Java population to the another mountain. You can see a uh, landslide uh, on the right side. That was uh, caused by uh, earthquake in 2006. And before there was a lot of uh, Nepenthes population there. But right now, only small part of it, and right now also the number is uh, decreasing because of poaching. It's a typical of uh, individual plant of uh, rosette, the under upper with a female influence. It's the typical. It grow along this uh, bank of. Uh, Lava stream. Then from Central Java, I would uh, like uh, to skip to uh, East Java population. The characteristic is uh, the leaves are thin compared to the another uh, form of uh, West Java or Central Java. And it also uh, rarely forming cluster of rosette. They tend to uh, uh, make a more flower rather than uh, making any cluster or set a vegetative uh, vegetative part. This is the beginning of this uh, Isafan population in Monlau. It is located uh, between a uh, border between Central and East Java, and it's also more drier than previous mountain. So the Nepenthes here is uh, more scarce, only in the wet side of uh, this. Mountain uh, that especially in the uh, southern part of the mountain, so southern side. I mean, so this is the typical Ishava. They are um, produce um, like a, a more uh, individual plant rather than a cluster of roses. It has a greenish a green stem uh, and also more thin. Leaves. This is offset for the for uh, climbing plant. You can see that uh, green stem of the typical of uh, East Java Gymnophora. This is how the leaf attachment. The under uh, upper picture and the inflorescence male inflorescence. And then in next slide, I would like to uh, show you the uh, eastern uh, distribution of uh, Nepenthes gymnophora, which, uh, according to Densa, is limited around here. But uh, current, current uh, exploration we find around here. But in future, we try to find the another eastern part of this uh, gymnophora population. But right now, we have discovered in this area. This is uh, Mount Semeru, the non-eastern uh, part of population of Nepenthes uh, Gymnophora. <coughs> and uh, we test can this mountain from the southern side. That's mean a uh, more wet area rather than uh, in northern side. 
and also uh, some of the population also growing along the uh, seasonal river. Really, uh, had the water in the rainy season, but other than uh, the river is getting flowed by uh, lava that uh, erupted from Mount Sameru. This is how we uh, climb up to the uh, Nepenthes habitat. Uh, we find it uh, in this mountain around uh, 900 meters up sea level. So this is how uh, we struggle along with uh, the heavy weight try to climb up a five meter waterfall. So it's a lot of some of my friends. <laughs> so this is the under an Nepenthes Chimnampra, you can see the consistency of uh, characteristic of uh, East Java, like a, a green, green color of steam. And also this one, the upper picture. And the another uh, uh, another variety of uh, the upper picture. And next, uh, the next species in Java was uh, the lowland Nepenthes mirabilis. Uh, perhaps I uh, cannot tell about the detail because uh, I I think that was uh, more. Uh, it is it was uh, similar to the typical of mirabilis in Sumatra or Borneo. But uh, it was once widespread in West Java, but at present only in one known site. It was uh, the rarest Java Nepenthes today, under then Chimna, uh, under then uh, the next I will present to you. Even it was uh, like uh, uh, widespread in the another island in Java, but this is was the before uh, they, they exist around here. Uh, lowland area in the West Java and also nearby in the, uh, Jakarta, one of the, uh, uh, the capital of uh, our country here. Before there was uh, exist here because there was a lot of uh, swamp area in here. But right now only in this side, only one side at present today. This is uh, the only known site for the Snapentus mirabilis in Java uh, right now. It's like a natu natural a natural reserve and only uh, cover a small part of area. And this area also um, right now is under deforestation here. Uh, some of the people try to uh, plant of uh, rice here also because it's fe uh, fertile for growing uh, rice. This is the typic uh, typical of it. Uh, from the start point to going to the uh, Morapolis habitat, it takes uh, three hours ma manual uh, without uh, engine, so you can wonder it. So and this is was our camp before we are going to the uh, Nepenthes habitat. It's more. Uh, this is like uh, most likely a f fishing camp for the locals who uh, spend life after uh, after looking for the fish. Uh, and this is the Marapilis in Java, the only known site. The typical Marapilis, still the typical Marapilis. The next one I would like to present you uh, is uh, Nepenthes adriani. Uh, well, uh, I'm not tend to be uh, narcissistic if uh, my name is mentioned here, but uh, it was uh, um, the taxonomist who decide give this name. Well, uh, when I was uh, collecting this specimen in 2004 in, uh, in this mountain in the Mount Slamet, uh, at present. It is only known from single site. 
So we are going back to Mount Slamet once again to see in the Dependence Adriani in, in its habitat. So this is the person who collect first when I tried, uh, when I uh, stood in the herbaria, I found that uh, the specimen has already collected in the uh, in 1911 by uh, Packer. He's a specialist of uh, flora of Java and make a, made a lot of book about the flora of Java. So the story is here. When first time he collected the specimen, he labeled this as a Nepenthes melamphora. But later on, uh, when he studied once again in 1920, he gave a nomen nudum as a Nepenthes singalana far javanica. Singalana is a, a <coughs> highland Nepenthes species from West Sumatra, but I think at that time, the specimen of uh, Sinjalana was present, so he talk, uh, for comparison, is rather similar to Sinjalana in 1920. But Dancer, once again, um, give the name as uh, Nepenthes Gymnamphora in 1927. But he, Dancer, give a remark that uh, in future, so there should be a complete specimen to decide this is uh, the testing uh, species. So let's see, next presentation. So this is the typical habitat of Adrenae. You can uh, see that uh, some of the plants growing on the tree, epiphyte, truly epiphytic. The rent is from uh, the rent of this plant is from um, 900 to uh, 1800 meter up sea level. So it's only. Uh, I think just uh, 1,000 meter range. So and this is young plants growing. This is the another one, single plant. A close up picture, another of another close up. So. This was our guide who try to uh, make a, a route for us to going up. So at least you have a wondering uh, how high this tree. You can see this. Oh, I think it's around uh, 30 meter. Yeah. So I would like to tell about this uh, character characteristic that. Um, The leaves are uh, lancet, spatulet <coughs> to oplanancet. This is some of the characteristics, consistent uh, characteristic. But a complete one, uh, you can see in the uh, paper uh, in future. But uh, I just make a hi highlight of uh, some of the char uh, important characteristics right now. So and this is the typical of then. Some people have asked me about the uh, difference in uh, to Nepenthes spatulata. So this picture is a Nepenthes spatulata. You can see the typical leaf that uh, very strongly uh, pet, uh, have a petiole compared to Adriani that uh, doesn't have any uh, petiole in the leaf. This is the, compar the comparison. And, and the next, I would like to uh, show you the another and describe taxa. So uh, it was a very different form, uh, rather than the uh, central, uh, the original Adriani. We have uh, discovered uh, uh, three years ago by uh, one of the member KTK, but unfortunately they didn't collect a specimen, so we cannot make a further study for that specimen. This is the. So it's like uh, information. <laughs> yeah.
This is the uh, mountain of the plan, uh, assistant of plan. This is the typical of uh, trout habit. They are also epiphytic like Adriani. This is only the some of the picture that I had, but not a professionally picture. This is the uh, upper picture. It also has a uh, expand peristom like those uh, upper picture of Adriani. This is the lower. Uh, that uh, is like a combination of between of. I think it's like a uh, more than spatulata actually. But uh, the difference uh, was the lid. I think the lid is more apicular like uh, this uh, singalana. Okay. Then uh, Anna, uh, I have already mentioned uh, uh, for uh, species that two are already undergoing a process of publication, but uh, we also find only single hybrids from only from single location that I will show you. This is the hybrid between uh, Adrenae and uh, Chimnamphora. You can see some of the characters still present. For the Nepenthes of Java, the threat was uh, like a habitat destruction since uh, Java is uh, one uh, the one of the uh, overpopulated uh, location in uh, in Indonesia. So, and uh, another uh, threat was uh, poaching, especially in uh, 2006. There, uh, we found that uh, dramatically uh, reduced of uh, Nepenthes species in the wild. So this is what the typical, uh, the, what they happen uh, with the uh, Adrenae, they are already pots and they just sell it. Like uh, this one, this uh, Chimnamphora from West Java. And this is already pots also. You can see uh, some of a uh, dying stem because they took the uh, crown parcel so they right now uh, unable to survive. Well, uh, uh, talking talking about the uh, future of Nepenthes in Java, that uh, one of our idea for uh, for our community was uh, we have to. Um, Propose a natural reserve for uh, certain uh, for some of uh, the rare Nepenthes in Java, and uh, and also uh, spread the seed in situ. That means uh, when our com uh, one of member our, our community going to the field, they find a seed. They should be not take all the seed then uh, they have to uh, also assist the Nepenthes to spread the seed in the in the uh, in the habitat so I think the most uh, I think uh, how to uh, hard to um, apply it is uh, planting re replanting uh, going to plant uh, the Nepenthes in the world since uh, it's need a, mon a consistent monitoring the, so I think it's not uh, uh, possible in back in my country because as uh, somebody uh, still looking for this unique plan and then uh, we have uh, have to uh, give in correct information to the local how to cultivate correctly if uh, Poaching happen in, into the, that location, but if there is uh, nothing happen about the uh, poaching, then uh, 
it's uh, it's better to uh, so to leave the plant uh, naturally growing. But this is like a, a prevention if a bad thing happen. So uh, I have uh, uh, I would like to uh, introduce some uh, uh, the Kaitika A. That was uh, our community. Um, that uh, we have a community pest uh, conservation. The idea was uh, building uh, you have to uh, change the mindset of the uh, change the member mindset about the conservation issues. So, so uh, I have uh, the, to that some of the point. This is how the mindset in our community. Changing your mind that reclaiming your plan is a, a, as a conservation, conservation plan. And set up in your mind that my plan is belonging to the nature. Our community, uh, it started in 2007. It's already a new community. So, uh, we have uh, already uh, 200 members at present, and uh, we have uh, different uh, from a varied background. So this is the step how the uh, member of our societies. And this was uh, just uh, our program that already realized that we have um, already uh, cooperation with uh, our botanical garden, uh, Highland Botanical Garden, to realize um, the Nepenthes Highland Greenhouse. So this is the, lo the location. So this is uh, uh, from our community. Would like to uh, give some uh, information to the another community here that uh, this is the idea. Like um, knowledge transfer about the experience growing ground forest plant that was uh, most important to us, and also making a, like a, making a common. Uh, like committed to monitoring the rare Nepenthes species. That was some of our idea. And, and uh, this was, was uh, our presentation today, but thank you for watching. Thank you. <laughs> we have uh, any questions? For the up, uh, for the lower picture, it can reach around 30 centimeters. For the upper, is at the, uh, is around 15 centimeters. That is. Yes, please. Question not related to the but on you travel a lot of Java. Yeah. Um, did you ever encounter Drosera spatulata there? Uh, right now, I didn't find any uh, Drosera spatulata, but uh, I find the another location of uh, Trocera Peltata. Yeah. Okay, please. Um, from the ICPS perspective, I can only second your proposal to submit any and all uh, first-hand conservation-related data to us. We are uh, uh, prepared to welcome to receiving any uh, recent data, and as Andreas has proposed, uh, gathering all uh, the current status 
data in one place would be uh, very useful for the whole CG community and I can only encourage you to, to submit whatever you like and we will try to build a database to uh, keep uh, our membership updated on, on the current status. Yeah, I hope in the future we have a corporation uh, for doing that uh, activity. Adding to, what, <laughs> adding to what Jan said, because my name said that this is just a conference and there's usually an outcome, but there are many specialists for different groups here. How about we just work together for an article about endangered carnivorous plants or for all general the IUCN statues for the Nepenthes experts, the Sarsinia experts, for Trostra? And this could be a nice article with you. Well, well I, I wouldn't limit it to an article because uh, progress is ongoing. I would rather reflect current knowledge in a permanently updated database that's available through the internet. Mm -hmm. I would prefer that. We could, of course, write a summary as an article in perhaps CPN or whatever, but I would like to have it in, in a book because a book is immediately outdated once it's printed. Yeah. I usually prefer if there's at least one public word which could be or could of course be yes. updated and online but something to, to refer to. It could be then a standard list like the site list be it now, which is used as um, sometimes a standard for but it's also standard because it's outdated now. Yes. It's, <laughs> but it's just only a starting point from which we can develop. Yeah, but printed methods usually preferably signed. If you, have an article, if you have an article somewhere published, you can refer to it. Everyone who is publishing yes. something else, new description whatsoever, can refer to that publication. And there's true. still some hesitation in citing the current name things. John has even been allowed it. We do allow it. <laughs> <laughs> do I have any question regarding to. Uh, Appendix Adrianic, since uh, sometimes it's still not clear about this plant, perhaps. Or rather, we can continue after this uh, lecture. You said that the differences between Appendix Adrianic and Spatulata uh, dwell in the, on the shape of a leaf. Leaf, yeah, uh, that's correct. Are there any other differences between the both taxa? Well, uh, uh, there's uh, some part like uh, indumentum, but uh, like now I cannot tell you uh, exactly what it, what is it because uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, like uh, indumentum and the spore of the picture, it's uh, have a different shape, and also uh, the inflorescence. It's uh, in Adriana you can see that uh, it's more longer than spatulata. And how, yeah. how, how far Nepenthes spatulata grows uh, from Nepenthes adrianum? I don't have it uh, yeah. in mind, it's distribution. Okay. I can show it. Spatulata uh, is here. Between here and here, there is no uh, adrianic population. Even there was uh, already discovered in between the form, in uh, here, in the Java, on single location. Is it, uh, uh, I guess I, I, I make a, like a estimation is 1,000 kilometers. Okay. Questions? Next question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you.